Welcome to the podcast with Face, Pat, and Tiz. And uh, as we continue to go against the grain, I think it's no better time to do that. Um, the past couple of weeks have been getting kind of sticky. So let's go ahead and kick it off with this week's. We're back into the top MCs before the 2000s. This tournament has been getting kind of real. Um, we are now at the Elite Eight. So by the end of tonight, we'll have the Final Four. And this was the first week that the pod squad got a chance to get their votes in. And we know the pod squad votes count as two votes. So this is going to be huge as to who they picked. And I can tell you now, um, at least one of these picks surprised me. So let's get into it. Can you guys see the screen? Yes. Awesome song. <laughs> um, do y'all have any particular area on the bracket that y'all want to start with or uh yeah how y'all feel um, say that one more time ghost face and nas ghost face killer uh, here we go Versus. here we motherfucking go nas. oh yes oh yes your boys padawan your boy who will win this um okay who wants to go first here i can hey. kick it off you know i can always <laughs> not me. Pat, tat, tat, tat. You don't want it. I'm not ready. Nah, y'all can go first. I go I'm first. Um, okay. Marketability. Marketability, I'm going to give it a Nas. Okay. I give, I'm going to give it marketability to Nas. Um, the longevity of his career and the ability to go to different markets and do different things and continue to be um, ever present in the game and ever changing, I give it to him. Um, stays present, I give it to Ghost Saves. Um, the ghost face show is just more entertaining to me than a knowledge show, just flat out. Um, now I come down to lyrical ability. Um, toss up, really. It's a really toss up. I'm not gonna be biased this week just because it's Nas. I'm not gonna be biased. I'm really gonna give it a, a true, what is it, college try. Um, Nas is one of the lyrical gods, they say. Um, I feel that Ghost is extremely underrated, extremely underrated. Um, I feel that if Ghostface would have originally been a solo act instead of part of Wu-Tang and then been a solo act, I feel like his his accolades would be a lot more than they are. And people would see him a lot higher than what he's ranked on the overall ranking when they, when people talk about the top 10, top 20 rappers, you know, like that, because right. he off from a group so anytime you think of him you think of Wu-Tang you don't yeah. think it's just him um, whereas someone else's Nas there's nothing else to attach him to where the, the other groups and stuff he was attached to later or he was affiliated with came later after his solo and he still have a present yeah. in solo so, lyrical um, I'm gonna just give it Give it to uh, motherfucking Nas, man. Ooh. Nas I, takes it. To I am actually surprised. So Face gives it to Nas. <clears throat> Shocked. I I, I actually <clears throat> am. I, I did not see that coming. Um, <clears throat> Pat, do you want me to go first or you want to take it first or would you like to know what the pod squad said? You you can go first. Okay. Um. As it goes to marketability, this is actually the toughest part of the category to me um, because they both have been in the game a long time and they both are very recognizable globally for different reasons. Um, they both have had their hand in acting. They both have had their hand in like um, other endeavors um, in business and products, um, endorsements, things of that nature. So like they're both household names. Um, I think what separates it for me is Nas now jumping into that um, tech bag and that crypto bag and that type of arena. That's a different type of money over there. A millionaire left the whole game off that shit. So, like, 
Mm-hmm. When you start adding that to your repertoire and you already are kind of neck and neck, I got to give the marketability to Nas. Um, also, he's in one of the movies that are one of my favorite movies of all time, mm-hmm. Belly. So even though his acting sucked in it, I, I, I'll roll with him on marketability. Lyricism, to me, it ain't even close. Ghostface says more and more pockets and is more creative in what he's saying. Um, he's more engaging um, to me in his flow. Nas has a very... um. It's very dry. His voice doesn't like fluctuate a lot. And I don't think he could do, I think that's just his voice. You know what I mean? There's not much you could do about that. But to me, that matters when you're putting your lyrics together almost. Like if you have a monotone voice, you're not going to be more willing to try like different uh, syllable structures or different word choices, even just off the fact that it's not going to sound right if you're just saying it like Ben Stein. But if you got a voice like this, and then you come like that, then you can say some wild shit and it's, it matches. You know what I mean? So um, I think Ghostface has been a master of learning how to match his persona to his lyrics. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna give lyricism to Ghostface. It comes down to stage presence. Who's the better MC? And this is where it's tough for me. Um. I think they both bring something different. Despite Nas's monotone voice, he's an MC. Like the, his movement, his, the way he carries himself has a certain uh, gravity to it that kind of holds weight and, and adds a presence to his um, stage performance and his actual, uh, like when he's like doing freestyles, et cetera. So I, I definitely respect him on that, but I think Ghostface to me, the animation, the willingness to I'll jump in the crowd, I'll knock a nigga out of my, like you never know what the fuck you gonna get with Ghostface. Like he's, he's Wu-Tang, like Wu-Tang has probably some of the best stage presence in the game, like as far as being able to engage a crowd. So I'm gonna roll with Ghostface, man, 2-1. Ghostface killer. All right, man. so, all right. <clears throat> well, I'm gonna go with um, marketing. I'm going with Nas. I'm only saying that because Ghostface, with Ghostface, Wu-Tang is basically his marketing. Yeah. Pretty much. Even though he's had his time, he has his own, um, he is the hardest working person in Wu-Tang. He has the most albums in Wu-Tang. So really, I feel like his work ethic kind of outshines most over like Wu-Tang like, <clears throat> I say he's the main reason why Wu Tang is Wu Tang, pretty much. But that's all building towards Wu Tang and not towards Ghostface, for real. So I give the market and the Nas, because, like you said, also his investment, when it comes to marketing, I always look, I, I base it off of who's the closest to Jay Z right now, mm. basically. Which kind of give, which kind of give Jay Z an unfair fucking advantage <laughs> in marketing. Yeah. Much. Yes, but he's the highest in the food chain to me. So I feel like whoever's the closest to it or gives me the closest feel to it. Not to say Ghostface is not near it, but we don't know Ghostface more on for that. We know Nas a little bit more than Ghostface for that. So I give market at the Nas. Okay. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Stage presence. I give that to Ghostface. Just in general. He's is he, Ghostface is just one of those personalities that you just instantly gotta respect. Not and it demands respect. Not to say Nas own legend status doesn't. Um, but at the same time, I don't know. It's just the he Ghostface forces that attention upon him. You know what I'm saying? No matter where you go, just like just like you said. So now it goes down to lyricism, and um, I I was on Nas's lyricism before I was actually fully engaged in Ghostface lyricism. Like, I've always been engaged with Ghostface because Wu-Tang is like, Wu-Tang and Nas, 
were the first raps that I really like sat there and was like, all right, this is my shit. You know what I'm saying? So that's this is like really hard to decide, but all in all, I'm gonna give it to Nas. So it'll be Nas two to one. Mm. Well, <clears throat> you'll be happy to know that the pod squad also went with you and Faith. Cause they also picked Nas as well. So Nas moves on to the final four. <clears throat> The final four, the top of the mountain, Mount Rushmore. Nas is there now. <laughs> All right. We got four more uh, brackets here, guys. We got either Common and Jay-Z. Let's get, let's get it out of the way. Let's get it out of the way. Common and Jay-Z. Come on, let's get it out of the way. <laughs> I'll take the lead on this. Y'all know Jay-Z is my guy. My favorite Come. rapper of all time. Um, This is easy for me. Jay-Z lyricism. Jay-Z marketability. Stage presence is where you can actually make an argument there, but I don't care. Jay-Z. I'll go next. Well, when it comes to stage presence, when you really look at it, you got to give it to Jay-Z. Now, marketability, we already know, goes to Jay-Z. Now, lyricism. And when you really sit back and look at it, you got to give lyricism to Jay-Z. So, I would say... <laughs> Jay -Z. When you really sit back and look at it. <laughs> when you really sit back and look at it. <laughs> I just got to give it to Jay-Z, man. Like, he's the better. Better all around MC than Tom. When you really so. sit back and look at it, when you really yeah. sit back and look at it, hey, uh -huh. really sit back and look at it, when you really sit uh -huh. back and look at it, I Marquise, make a song out of our shit. I want a song, <laughs> nigga. All right, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> the floor is again, y'all. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> It's not even after 11. I, I have no excuse to be this damn sleepy, but I'm sorry. He on mute. You on mute, Pat. Oh, shit. My bad. I was, uh, I was running my mouth and everything. Damn. <laughs> I was running my mouth and everything, <laughs> uh, I was talking all kinds of shit, man. <laughs> but let me, all right. Um, so let me start it off by saying, <laughs> let me, um, let me just start off by saying, look, Tom is one of my favorite artists. I like his, I like a lot of his songs. Um, sometimes I, I feel like, all right, Common, you, I like you, but sometimes, man, you you, you just be like, it could die, it could die, it could die. It could die. <laughs> Yo, you love that fucking line. Dip it, dip it, Yo, and I'll be like, and I'll be like, yo, so you couldn't think of nothing, nothing else other but tick a die, tick a tick a tick a All right. Okay. So um, I said all this to say, yo, I really like Common, but it's Jay Z. All right, let's go to the next round. <laughs> That's it. And the pod squad agree. The first 5 0 of the bracket series. Jigga, my nigga. Uh -uh. So Jay Z is definitely on to the final four. And that's interesting. The first two to move <clears throat> on Jay Z and Nas, which leads us to our last two. Uh, brackets. How y'all want to go? Okay, we got uh face bus uh having to bounce. He got to go handle some biz. So he did send in his uh final votes though. So he did pick uh okay. So we have his final votes and we have the positive vote. Um, Pat, which bracket you want to go to next? Uh, let's do Buster. Uh, and Eminem. All right. Now, this one is actually interesting. Um, you want to go first? You want me to go first? Or you want me to tell you what the podcast is? 
Let's go with the with the pod squad said first. Okay. So the pod squad had <clears throat> Buster Rhymes. Hmm. Right. Um I didn't personally see that coming. I was very surprised. Um, but let's get into it, Pat. Um, I'll go ahead and say, uh, well, I'll say faces vote for last, I guess. Pat, how you feel? This one, this one I actually want to see in a versus. And this one I actually like, this is going to be tough or whatever, because well, I'll start with the easiest bracket for me. Stage presence, Buster Rhymes. Even though Eminem has his own stage presence because we know with Eminem, it's going to be some shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But Buster Rhymes. Um, Buster, go ham. All right, marketing. There's no way I can out it. Like, I really want to root for Buster. I really do. But it really makes no logical sense in my head when I calculate things marketing wise that he could beat Eminem. But at the same time, if I'm just looking at the stats, I'm going to say Eminem for Mark. Indeed. I would agree okay. just um oh go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm tripping. No, go ahead. No, you can go ahead. I'm I would done. I would say, yeah. Like you got bust or yeah. L. Then it's the lyricism, man. That's the yeah, that's why I was like, let me back up. I I, I jumped the gun there. I'm gonna go with L for lyricism. And I almost disagree with my choice. But at the same time, I feel like I have more examples of like Eminem being a little bit introspective. Buster Rhymes flows are like a sci-fi movie to me. Like instant level event, like uh what's that one before it? Uh when disaster strikes. When I get into the vein of Buster Rhymes, I feel like list. I'm. I feel like I'm listening to a, a space movie. Like I can listen to Buster Rhymes and look at Fifth Fifth Element or whatever. I I don't really expect Buster Rhymes to give me introspective rhymes. Like I don't want to go. I don't go to Buster Rhymes for that. I go to Buster Rhymes for. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's, that's why I go for. It. <laughs> and 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 not necessarily. I don't ever go to Eminem for introspective rhymes, but every once in a while, you got some introspective rhymes. You know, the way I am, lose yourself. So, and not even that. He just do he do crazy shit with words, man. That just not anybody can like. He he can rhyme orange. This orange. Is this is true. This is so true. that's why I'm giving it to Eminem. Even though I feel like it's a travesty, and at the end of the day, I kind of feel like Buster Rhymes should be at the Mount Rushmore more than Eminem. Or because of the longevity? Like not, yeah, longevity. And we'll, okay. like, I, I feel culturally, I feel like he's done more. I think hmm. culture-wise, Buster has done a whole lot more than Eminem. Okay, I can I can kind so of see that. that there. Yeah, yeah, but okay. off of the stats that we use, it's Eminem. <clears throat> okay, um, we got the pod squad. We got you for me. Um, for lyricism. I would say this was probably the tougher of the three areas. I feel like the other two, I was kind of, it was kind of easy Definitely. for me to decide, but um, it's kind of like, it's basically as far as what their abilities with rapping is, I think they're pretty neck and neck. I think that where they differ and where Eminem kind of sets itself apart is in the ability to change, um, 
concepts and topics a little more easily. Like he's had, he's has a more wide range of areas in life that he can touch upon to me or that he's mm-hmm. shown that he could touch upon. I feel like Buster could, but he kind of just sticks to generic rap where like it's going to be some good bars in there, but it's kind of like all over the place. It doesn't have a, like a real through narrative. Um, The only place I've seen him deviate from that formula is when he's like rapping like um to the ladies or like his slower songs, maybe when you give it to me, that type of thing, or mm-hmm. you know, with Janet Jackson, like then he's mm-hmm. kind of on target, but in every other song, it's kind of just like he's rapping, but it's no like, this is what I'm rapping about. This is the concept I'm laying out for you or the story I'm telling. It's kind of just good rap. So for that, I give Eminem lyricism. Um, stage present is easy. Busta Rhymes is in the top three, four uh, performers in hip hop, probably ever. ever. Like, he's he's the real deal when it comes to on that stage. So I'm not even going to waste my class. time with that. Like Busta is definitely that. Um, definitely a master class then the marketability um this is actually very close um a lot of people would kind of want to just go straight to Eminem but I think that it's very close because Buster has the movies um he mm-hmm. has a lot of brand deals he also has um his own label um I think where the difference is is that Shady is a larger label who's made more um as an individual artist Eminem just got certified as the number one for singles. I mean, he already had like, you know, he was already up there with album sales. Like, mm-hmm. he checks more boxes and his record label has done more than Flip Mode has. I ain't gonna even front. Um, so I gotta give it to him on that. Um, so yeah, 2-1 for me, it was Eminem. And then Face had his uh, vote in and he actually picked Buster Rhymes. Uh, we'll have to check with him next week and kind of get his uh, explanation on this one. Um, but yeah, so uh, Buster Rhymes moves on three to two, and he'll be seeing Nas in the final four, which leads mm. us to the last of the brackets, the last of the Mohicans, the last of the Elite Eight round. Red Man versus Tupac. I can go first since you went first last time. Um, mm-hmm. And actually, I'll first give uh, face Face's vote. Um, he had picked Red Man, so I'll start there. Um, and now I'll start. Um, so for lyricism, this is really tough because both are very great lyricists, but for different reasons. Like they're, they have different skill sets. Um, this is kind of one of those things where like Styles makes fights and this is just a weird style class. Um, yeah. Mm, my heart says Tupac, but on the actual art of lyricism, I'd actually give it to Red Man. So um, I'll give it to Red Man there. Wow. Um, then we got stage present. Now, this is where it's tough for me. Um. Mm-hmm. Red Man is the more animated one. Definitely up there and when it comes to performers. But Tupac used to have kind of that DMX effect where it's like less is more, where like him hitting a certain move or him like going into a certain thing or taking off his shirt at a certain moment or like throwing off the jacket at a certain moment, like looking at <clears> the crowd at a certain moment. Like his ability to capture the essence of a crowd and yank that emotion out of them and get them captivated and locked in is different. Um. And I think it kind of goes to preference on that, like whether with which type of stage presence do you prefer almost? You know what I'm saying? So uh yeah, I would say Tupac for that. So we got um lyricism, red man, stage presence, Tupac, and then we go to marketability. And I think this one is the easiest one for me. Um, Tupac is one of the largest, like he's still selling records to this day. He's had the movie game, he had like his estate is worth millions and millions just because everything he does generates. He could put out a t-shirt tomorrow and that shit would go nuts. Like he is the real deal. And Red Man has never even went for that marketing big money lane. He's always been more about the actual culture and the essence of hip hop and that type of a vibe. So I think for just merely the fact that Red Man outside of the movies, he hasn't really tried to do a lot 
else that I know. You know what I mean? Um, I know recently mm-hmm. starting to get into cannabis, but that's so recent it hadn't like took off to the point where it's like up there yet. So for right now, I have to go with uh Tupac for marketability. So two one, Tupac Shakur. Pat. Oh. There's some stage presence marketing. Kind of want to root for Red Man, but everything is saying Tupac. All right, so stage present. Go with your that gut, man. Go, go with your gut and the fat. That's the hardest one. Marketing Red Man, Tupac. It's like there's no way you cannot get a profit off of the off of the name of Tupac if you're using it in any form or fashion or whatever. Box office. Um, <clears throat> as far as lyricism, we're gonna give it to Red Man, but I think everything else is Tupac. Stage presence and and marketing wise is Tupac. Okay. Well, that is two one Tupac for Pat. Well, one other thing I wanted to say is that correct, or well, should I hold off before I click that vote? No, no, it's it's correct. It's correct. Okay. It's correct. One thing I wanted to say also is that yeah, if Tupac was to show up some type of way, hologram or ghost or whatever, or if he was still a, I think he would still have that that stage presence or whatever. Yeah. I think, People think would be frozen would in be, place. Picture perfect. I paint a perfect picture. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. it, it would be on and crack that, that right one there, time bro. there. One, that one time they had that hologram, I was surprised they didn't have a hologram for the uh, Super Bowl. I was waiting for you when they did the California Love. Mm-hmm. I just knew Tupac was gonna come out of. As soon as I step on the scene, mm-hmm. I'm hearing Hoochie screaming. That would have, mm-hmm. that would have, that would have shook the building. That would have been one of them earthquake moments. L.A. would have went all. Mm-hmm. And I feel like if he was alive, they probably would have had a. Uh, they might have had that that particular Super Bowl. Um, Halftime show sooner than 2022, just cause. But mm-hmm. other thing, other side note from uh, the other bracket, Busta Rhymes. I don't like when Busta Rhymes talk about Coke. If you notice lately, <laughs> he got a lot of songs. He he got some verses from time to time. I'm in love he, with the Coco. You know that was one of his artists, and you know he was. And they sprinkle the coke upon the coke. Something he sounded like that or something in the rhyme. I'm like, uh, I don't come for you. I don't go to you for the, the coke rhymes. You know, Buster, I we've had a long history of you not even using them. But after 2010, it seems like I'm hearing you saying La Coca. Rhymes a little bit more, or whatever. So he's snorting that shit to try to get some. I don't know, man. I just feel like he, he was, just he has like, been plump and about to pop for the past few years. Yeah, and then I just feel like he's just around a bunch of drug rappers now, or whatever. Because I don't know, man. It seems like whatever, whatever some people feel is still cool, but not mainstream becomes underground, or whatever. So if you were a Wu Tang head, you're underground. If you, if if you like nothing but those old mixtape drug bars, you're underground. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like once once the fad is over in hip hop, everything about it is all the other genres within hip hop are underground genres now, pretty much. Yeah. That makes sense. And I feel like I don't know. I feel like he might be saying those coke rhymes because he feel like he has to hang with the. Like almost, I only maybe I'm saying this because when I was rapping, I felt like I had to say drug related raps, so people would understand raps that I say. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It almost mm-hmm. feels like that. Like or he's whatever. trying to become be, be relevant. Yeah, like he, like, like if he hear him in a song with Jada Kiss or something like that, you might hear one of those little like coke rhymes from time to time, or whatever. Mm. I haven't I been listening know. to Buster lately, but I'm gonna uh, have to see what you're talking about. 
Every once in a while. Every once in a while. But yeah, that's that's my rant. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the pod squad agreed with uh, us on the Tupac. So four to one, Tupac moves on, and our final four is set. We have Busta Rhymes versus Nas and Tupac versus Jay-Z. Ether versus Super Ugly Takeover is right here on full display, and we could see the final showdown be Jay-Z versus Nas, or we could have another upset like this past round with Busta, and Busta could move on, or Tupac could kick Jay-Z's ass. We will find out what next week. Which me and my MCs girlfriend or two thousand. Which me and my girlfriend song is the right me and the girlfriend song. That's good. That's that's good. Yeah, I hadn't even put that together. Yo, that's crazy. And again, the, me and my girlfriend. These random brackets, man. Like we we set the the names, but then I just throw that shit into a bracket generator, and that shit comes out like this. So like this is crazy that <clears throat> we 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 could see that. But then again, man, with the pod squad, you never know. So we gonna see. Mm -hmm. Pod squad, get your votes in. The links will be posted on social media this week. <clears throat> get your votes in. Get your votes in. Shout out to everybody who voted in this past week's round. And remember, Pod Squad, your votes count as two votes. So it is possible for you to, you know, kind of sway things in your favor with just one other partner's uh, vote. So please, please, please get your votes in. Have your voice heard. Um, and um, speaking of having your voice heard, 